Can you hear me? Let me know. Let me know if you can hear me. Should be loud enough. How is everyone doing this morning? There we go. All right, all right, all right. Sorry we started a few minutes late this morning. But we are going to be going for a little while, so don't you guys worry. Let's get straight into it. First off, happy, happy Monday. Hit the like if you guys are excited as I am at the moment. Uh, it's good to be back in Dallas. As most of you know, I was traveling last week. Unfortunately, my dad's really sick at the moment, for those who don't know, so I've been going back and forth. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, it's it's not looking good for him, and that's just kind of where it stands at the moment. But thanks to everyone for your messages last week and throughout uh, this whole process has been has been amazing. has been an amazing blessing, you, you know, just the support from everyone. So thank you guys so much. Hope you guys had an excellent, excellent Thanksgiving. Where's everyone joining from this morning? Got quite a few people in the room. It's good to see. Good to see. If you're Wolfpack people, we are using the YouTube chat for questions this morning. Questions, answers, concerns, comments. Let's light it up, all right? Dallas, all right. Me too. Good stuff. NYC, Georgia, Germany, Chile, España, New Zealand. Nice. UK, Greece. Dang, guys. All over the place, huh? Well, we do not have too much time. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is cut right to it. As always, no bullshit. Getting straight into the scans. All right, the scans, the scans, okay? For those who have never traded with me in the past, there's not much too much to the scanning, okay? There is not too much to the scanning, in my opinion. Let's see here. Let me get to... Sorry, y'all. Make sure I have everything where it needs to be so I can see what I need to see. Do what I need to do. Okay. Good, good. Good, good. Okay, y'all still see that? A lot of stuff on my scan this morning, y'all. Which tells me, yeah, probably market's gapping up. Okay. And we're going to treat this like I just sat down, haven't been sitting with you guys. Okay. When the markets gap up, generally speaking, oh, we're gapping down for now. So that's a little bit interesting. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Looks like a small gap down going on in the overall markets at the moment. So interesting to see quite a few stocks on my scan is all I'm saying. Generally speaking, and we're going to start with process, right? 
talking process. First step in process, overall markets. What have the overall markets been doing? What patterns have been working? Um, have we had runners in small cap, all right? But starts with overall markets. And what I've been really keen on is how they've been interacting with small cap, okay? How they've been interacting with small cap. That, that aside. How has small cap been working? And the answer to that question has been really, really, really well, you guys, for a while, all year, okay? Really, really well, really well. But we have this weird divergence right now. Really, really weird divergence where we look at this, okay? Right now, here's SPY, right? Here's SPY. Here's our all-time highs on SPY. Do this. All-time high, all high on SPY, all right? Right here. Lower high, right? But we're but we're getting close. Last time Spy was here, I had when I went like this. Look, I'm on my filters, uh, filtering top price of one. Okay, filtering top price of one percent change. We're gonna take that off, like we've been doing. Filter. These are all the stocks that I have on my scan that are under a dollar five hundred and sixty. Last week there were six hundred and something of them. This week there's five hundred and sixty of them. Okay. 560 stocks are in a dollar. Last time that these markets were at these levels up here, okay? Last time we were at these levels up here, in this area, whoops, sorry, not that one, okay? We had no stocks on this list, none. We had no stocks on this list, okay? No stocks. So it's kind of this interesting thing right now where we have all these small cap stocks. It's pretty fucking amazing right now, okay? All right, all right, all right. But we're not here to talk about the SPY. All right, top percent gainers this morning, RDHL. RDHL goes right along with what we've been seeing. Bottom bouncers, 10 cent, 20 cent, 30 cent stocks, bouncing to 50 cents, 70 cents, 100 cents, a buck, two bucks, 100 cents, a buck, two bucks, three bucks, right? Crazy, crazy stuff. So this goes right along line with that. We've got RDHL, and we are short on time, y'all. But lucky for y'all, it's Cyber Monday, and we're doing a special... Uh, we're doing a special today on how to beat these goddamn robots, man. <laughs> so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do some live trading hopefully here in about ten minutes. Look at a few tickers really quick, do some live trading, and then get into a few lessons this morning before wrapping up. Sound good to everybody? So if you're one of my Wolfpack people, you're used to moving over to the Discord for our webinars. We're gonna be here for a little while. Make sure to hit that like if you uh. Sorry, one second. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Spread out here this morning. Red Hill Bio announces FDA grant, blah, blah, blah. That's all. All right. FDA grant. FDA grant. All right. Daily first, always, in terms of process. Everyone gets sucked into everything. And by the way, y'all, this is the only real top percent gainer. Big one. All right, and then let's get to my scan real fast. Let's get back to my normal scan. 5%, let's do our dollar volume, 50,000. Okay, now I'm down to 30 stocks on this scan, good. Always, always, always zoom out, right? So tempting to just get here and say, all right, let's trade, but it's big picture first, right? Oh, big, good, big, big fader. Nice, nice. Some volume recently, that's a little bit concerning, but at these prices, it's not a ton of volume, believe it or not. It's not a ton of dollar volume. So they've already shown they ran, uh, I remember this run, right? They ran from uh, 25 cents to 75 cents, which gives me a little bit of cause for concern. This is why... Okay, this is why we go to the daily chart. Okay, 
this is exactly why we go to the daily chart. Understand this, everyone? Let me know in chat, please. The intraday is the intraday, right? Right, kind of that clear, at least clear to me, area there on RDHL where I got to be careful for on a gap up this morning. Does that make sense? Okay, that's all I'm looking for on these things and potentially the other side of this too. Which looks like that, right? Ah. Just basic on the daily, right? Now we're going to start digging in. Now we're going to start digging in. And where is this stock? Oh, it's up at that breakout level already, right? I hate gap ups over breakout levels. Hate it with a passion. Hate it with a passion, y'all. There's going to be gapping up here, right? There's people already. Oh, my gosh. Here comes Billy. We're already talking about Billy today, right? Billy's in this, guys. Billy's up in this, okay? That's not to say that he won't make money today. I really hope he does, right? Let's see ya. I won't have to look around so much. Sorry, you guys. Okay, sorry, y'all. Anyways, this is one of those deals where I'm not a big fan of the setup, okay? It's gapped really big into an area of breakout. Please, please let me know if this makes sense. Even if it works, and I hope it does work out, right? I do. I hope it does work out. And, I'm, and I will still come out here, okay? And this is what we're talking about. Billy's literally right there, y'all, right? Keep doing that. How do I get back to my... All right. For those who have never joined me, who's Billy? It's you, pretty much, if you're just joining me the first time. You're a new, if you're a noob, you know. Oh, it's a double Billy, too, because that's a high a daybreak on top of that crap, right? This is every new trader that's out there chasing through highs. We talk about high a day being the absolute worst, y'all. All right, so there's that little bit. Um, we could say, come in here and say, yeah, we've got a little bit of support in this area too, right? So it's not all bad for Billy, but it's all bad for Billy, okay? From a macro. From a macro is all that matters here, guys. Okay? Does this make sense? Please let me know if this makes sense. I'm super, super... Well, I'm not going to trade it personally. All right.
Now, I really hope it does what? I hope it squeezes. That's what I'm hoping for. You know what I mean? That's what I'm hoping for here. Markets are open. Normally the MO for me, y'all, on something like this would be to work here. Let's work out some of this older stuff here. All right. Okay. Let's let's pretend like it's funny. Look where this topped out. Okay. So let's say this breaks out, halts, you know, very well could, something like that. First of all, Monday mornings. Monday mornings, y'all know I like to let things shake quite a bit. Almost always. All right. But normally the MO would be this on something like RDHL. Right? FDA news, stuff like that. We, we start playing this game. Let's get some good risk reward. All right. After we've mapped out key levels, which for me would be kind of this area here, right? This area here down to 45 cents. So where am I going to get the best risk reward? Okay. I don't like looking at what Billy's already trapped, guys. Billy's been trapped. Holy shit. Dumbass. And he got trapped on Friday too, right? Right? Him and all his friends. Okay. Hoping to get bailed out at the moment. Here's our little bit of pre-market support. It did start to bounce off 65 cents going into the, into the open. Barely. Okay. I don't like these ideas. I don't like these ideas. Keep an eye on the scan real quick too. I'm going to try to keep eyes on a couple here. Okay. But the idea for me, I would need this to set up like this, guys and gals. Sorry. Some sort of idea like this. Okay. We know high day now, 75 cent area. Okay. I wouldn't really want to use this support level. I would need some really big pool. Okay. I could get good risk reward back to VWAP, back to highs a day. That would be the idea on something like this. And obviously we're just getting a morning spike at the moment. Okay. Morning spike. Same with Thar, little morning spike. Okay. Thar's another one of these ideas here. And I'll try to do better at making sure we keep these comments up so I can see y'all. Try to get a few trades in too. Kind of a trade-off sometimes between me getting to trade and me teaching. So it just is what it is. Here's what happens at this point in these charts, all right? First of all, we've got short sellers who have already stepped in. And this is the most important part. When I'm watching these charts, guys, is I'm trying to figure out where these where the emotions are, all right? What is the psychology behind the chart at the moment, right? Not like stupid patterns and breakouts. I'm, everyone's just waiting for these things to break out. I understand that these areas into highs are just a no-go for me. These are short sellers, okay? They live near highs. They live here. They live near lower highs. They live here, right? Go back to the last few live webinars I've done on, on YouTube. If you're in my pack, go back to all the last live webinars and watch how on point these ideas are, 
That's not, I don't make this shit up. I've been looking at it, been trading them for a really long time. This is why I don't trade breakouts. I hate breakouts. Breakouts are the worst. Where the whole theme of today is going to be how to trade with and against these computers that we're trading with, hedge funds, institutional investors that are all out to screw us. But they're also creating these crazy, crazy moves at like crazy, crazy 100, 200%, 500%, 1,000% intraday moves, you guys. From 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, right? Please let me know if that makes sense. Can y'all see this? Can y'all see this chart a little bit better than the last one? Anyways, here is the idea. Here is the idea. More shorts, more shorts, more shorts always in these areas. Look at this, okay? This is where they live, you guys. You have to understand. If you want to be long, you have to understand the short side. Okay, shorts have bigger accounts. There's fewer of them, but they've got bigger accounts and they're better. By nature, okay, we're talking about some of you, if you haven't watched uh, my video on being a contrarian, I'll, I'll post some links to a bunch of videos at the bottom that I think are going to be really important for a lot of you guys and gals. But by nature, okay, by being a short seller, you're being a contrarian. More people are long. The, most of them have smaller accounts, okay? Really important principle. Really, really important principle that for me, when I'm looking at a ticker like this, okay, all the targets that I need to sell into on a chart like this are up here. So when the stock is trading here, is it a good trade for me? I still don't see it that way. Okay, I still don't see it. I see it as inverse risk reward up here. If I'm buying up here, even worse into these levels, okay, just to get back to those highs, just to get back to pre-market highs, which we may not even get to, okay, here's high a day, so why am I buying it here? Target should be high a day for me at this point, a realistic target should be high of day, I hope this makes, hope this makes sense, this is where short sellers are though, okay, good short sellers will be covering into areas like this, at least taking a piece off. right? As Billy panics. Happy Billy, happy little Billies. There's definitely Billies through this right here. A million percent, you guys, a million percent, a million billion percent. There's Billy there again. Okay. And fucking here again, right? Does that make sense? What does the wolf do? What do I do? Okay. Why do I make money while all these other longs don't? Why? I'd hang around here somewhere. Does that make sense? New low a day, by the way. Billy. Sorry, Billy. This is where Billy always cuts. It's not to say I'm going to be long here. Again, big picture for me. Big picture for me. Look at this already. When I start to draw these little emojis, it starts getting very crowded in terms of emotions up there. Does that make sense, y'all? And where are these emotions at? Well, a very, very pivotal point on this chart, at least in my eyes. Right? Please let me know if this makes sense. Short sellers, good shorts should be covering into these levels. All right? This is actually what I want to see. I'm actually watching this area right now. And let's actually, um, this is actually where I start watching tape in the first place. Not that I'm not watching tape, you guys. Ooh, what's BDRX doing?
All right, all right. All right, see, I'm trying to get uh, tape up for you guys. Sorry, you guys. You guys got tape now? And I'm trying to ca capture it for you as well when I'm watching these things. So here's our low of day break right now, all right? It's already shown us. It's already shown us here that it may have kind of faked. I wasn't able to really watch the tape at, the, at that point in time, but just from the daily chart, just from the chart, can you see that right now? Some of you might have even seen it in real time. Dang. These are the areas where I get interested, though. I really hope this makes sense. I really hope this makes sense because because it will be a huge help to a lot of you, I promise. Nice reversal there. Missed it. Okay. There's a little trade off, like I mentioned. Okay. So again, you have to ask yourself, is the juice worth the squeeze up here? You know, there's a couple cents, seven, eight cents. It's a small little range that it's traded in. And for me, the answer is no. Okay. This is where, you you know, you guys are wondering like, some people I speak to, and this is a big deal, you guys. You can't just come in, start dip buying. It is magical. It is going to fix so many things, but it's not. It's not for some people, you know, the results are better than others, but it's not just instantly a miracle. There's no such thing as that in trading, you guys. Okay. Sorry, let me look at. Uh, Pele or Beckham? Holy crap, Pele or Beckham? Obviously Pele, but I watched the Bex documentary recently, and holy crap, what a beautiful, beautiful uh, man that man is. Both beautiful looking and just a good dude and a badass. A badass. I didn't realize he was such a badass. Maybe because he was so damn handsome. <laughs> okay. Anyways... The idea, the idea is that when people get afraid, that is when I'm buying. That is where I'm trying to put myself. When Billy panics, when the short sellers are being paid, where do these guys cover? A good short seller up here would be covering, yeah, into lows, right? Because they're getting the opposite. You guys have to, have to, have to understand this concept, please. Okay? This is so important. This is so, so important from a short perspective. Sorry. That is it. From a short perspective, this is what they see. This is the good risk reward for them. Okay. Here are these highs. Okay. Here are these highs. And the closer they can get to highs, y'all, the closer that they can get to these highs, the better the risk reward for them. The good short sellers are up there. Okay? It doesn't mean that there aren't bad short sellers. There are tons of them. And these short sellers are the ones that provide the big move for us, if this makes sense to you all. 
Okay, these guys are the ones, the second someone short sells, they have to cover. They have to cover, okay? And these principles that we're gonna talk about today govern everything for me, govern everything. This guy now, super scared. This guy, super scared. This guy, super scared. All of these billies panicked through low of day right there and it barely budged. It didn't, it hardly even broke. Does that make sense? Now they're FOMOing. These guys are going to FOMO back in. Billies are waiting to buy up here again because, of, oh, by the way, it's a breakout. Don't forget, right? And Billies love breakouts more than anything, okay? You guys see this breakout forming? Look at what's happening here already. This is why breakouts suck so much, but why they also can be really explosive at the end of the day, at least for a small period of time as they squeeze. What is the problem with breakouts in small cap? Can someone tell me? In general, what is the problem with break, breakouts in general in small cap? And again, I mentioned, look, they're doing massive volume today, 45 mil. I mentioned this wasn't that much volume earlier. Remember 20? It was a little bit concerning, but it wasn't hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of shares. Today, they're going to do over 100, 200 million shares, right? Does that make sense, everyone? Yes. Just in general, in small cap, okay? These shares are pump and dump scams. They're all biotechs that suck with one, one drug in their pipeline, okay? The only way to get cash is from this. Please let me know in chat right now if you understand. The only way for these companies to get cash is for this to happen. Right now, they're using this volume to sell shares most likely to put money in the bank for themselves. Or if they're not doing it right now, they're pumping their stock price to eventually be able to do that. Please let me know if this makes sense in chat, everybody. It's so important. So, so there's multiple things, there are multiple forces at, at work all the time that are going against us when we're trying to trade these things. And why you don't see me chase and why you see me watch these things run with impunity is because I understand these dynamics. That yes, this one may squeeze, okay? This one may squeeze, but guess what? If it doesn't work, oh, Billy is back in again. Billy's back in again. I can tell you that much. I can tell you Billy just bought the crap out of it and I can tell you it was just reshorted too. Okay, so the, these are the dynamics. Look at that shit, right? Get out of town. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Hit that like button if you saw that. And you're starting to learn to not be Billy anymore. You're starting to learn that Billy gets in trouble every time. And there's a much better way to go about this. Even now, which I'm not going to be up in this thing but you're going to see it over and over and over and over again okay y'all So crazy. But also not, you know what I mean? Like, well, we're going to get into some more stuff here in a second. So the whole goal here, okay? If you And also these short sellers, they cover here, the good short sellers. Again, see this risk reward here? Do you guys understand what just happened? Please tell me this, please. This guy makes money. This guy makes money. This guy makes money. This guy makes money. Okay? The short sellers, these guys are all making money. And oh, the overriding theme, the overriding theme of all of this is that it's being manipulated too at the end of the day. Okay? Let 
right? At the end of the day, all of these companies are being manipulated. They really are. I promise. Their price is being manipulated to the downside. That's why they go from fucking 10, 50, 5, back down to zero, and then reverse split pump, and then over and over again, we see it happen, okay? These are the dynamics at play. They don't change. Human emotions don't change. We are pawns in this game. But you just have to understand where to buy. Billy can be right. Billy is always wrong, even when he's right, which we talked about, okay? Even, even if this rips, it goes without you, and you just used your two PDT trades for the day. <laughs> for the week, you know what I'm saying? It's so stupid. It's so, so stupid, and it's designed. Do you guys think it's not designed exactly for that? They design it so that you come in, you lose your money, you give them money, then you can't trade till next week. Can you guys please understand this? I hope it, I hope it makes sense to you, because... It's the only way, it is the only way you can make money trading small cap to the long side, which is the best place to be long. Not as an investor, but as a trader. I've been watching this damn scan, you know? I've been watching this damn scan for 2016. This exact scan right here, I've been watching since 2016. And every single day, okay? I'm not filtering, look at this. There's no top price here, guys. I'm not saying like I won't trade big cap, okay? I'm not saying I won't trade big cap. This is not filtered by price at all. See, there's a couple of 20, a couple higher price stocks here. But it is to say that big cap stocks are never, ever, almost ever, ever on my scan except for weeks like a couple weeks ago. They're just not. There's not enough percent gain. And and you need a lot of capital to take advantage of the fact that they don't even that they have range, but they're super expensive. So it doesn't even make sense at all to me. I understand trading them and stuff when you have more capital like I do. I understand that. But I don't have edge there. I have edge because I understand exactly exactly how these games are being played. Okay. When there are algorithms that are being traded, HFTs, short sellers, retail idiots. Okay, I know how to get great risk reward and I can do that over and over and over again. And I can predict PRs with certain setups like the reverse split pump, right? So there's a lot of things going on, okay? There's a lot of dynamics that you have to have to understand. But at its most basic, basic form, its most basic form, when I'm looking at someone's trades, and I work one-on-one -on -one with all my traders, not all of them, but a lot of the traders I'm working one-on-one -on -one with nowadays, which has been a revelation, honestly, for me as a teacher and as a mentor and as a trader have been the one-on-ones, working with traders one-on-one, -on -one, doing something that people don't want to do because it takes a lot of time and does not it's not the best usage of their time necessarily um, in terms of business. But for me, that's been the biggest revelation, okay? has been working with you guys one-on-one, -on -one, seeing the commonalities, but then seeing how different everyone truly is and what has taken each person that I'm working with something. It's been something different. Okay. It's been something different in terms of what I've had to do to get through to some people and stuff like that. So it totally makes sense to me that a lot of y'all struggle. First of all, if you're a Billy and you buy through highs, you're not going to make it. Okay. You're just not, you're not going to make it. Okay, if you are, if this is, if your plan is to buy any sort of strength, okay, any sort of strength, it's going to be tough. If you're trying to trade cup and handles, if you're trying to trade breakouts of intraday highs, big time no no, my least favorite. See these guys, everyone, let me know if this makes sense to you, please. If you guys understand who I'm talking about, Billy, who's still Billy in this room? Don't lie. Do not lie. The first thing you have to do if you want to get better at trading is look yourself in the mirror. Look at your actual results and be real with yourself, okay? If you've been trading for a while, a year or two years, whatever it is, you got to be real with yourself. Have you made money? Have you not? Have you been buying? What, what do you do? Are you Billy? If you're Billy, I sell to you. If you're Billy, my students, the ones that have been progressing, they sell to you. I hope this makes sense. So what do I do if I want to not be Billy? Right? Well, be patient. Okay? Be patient. Understand when and where to dip by and how. Understand that when this stock is here, 
you're too damn late. When this stock is here, you're chasing. When this stock is here, you have inverse risk reward. When this stock is here, all the short sellers are there. So you can be right and wrong at the same time. Does this make sense? Let's look at some more charts. We've just literally been honed in on RDHL this morning. BDRX. BDRX entered into an agreement to acquire exclusive worldwide, exclusive worldwide license to Telimidin, a phase two ready asset for type one diabetes. Okay, some more process stuff again. Um, who knows what I'll do with this? Absolutely nothing. There's no trade for me, period, point blank, end of story. Beautiful, though. Beautiful. Beautiful little squeeze. Okay. I look at this pretty much like this in terms of the little bit of support and resistance we have. You know, maybe uh, this area. That would be kind of it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. 550. 454 those couple areas in terms of support and resistance now i got 750 okay so here's the question you always have to ask yourself where's the trade do i ever take a damn trade yes i do i trade when the time comes and this is what you guys have to understand why you suck at trading is because you can't because you always got to be fucking billy every day if it doesn't set up i don't take the trade there are weeks where I'm taking 10, 20, 30 trades. I'm all in my entire account over an entire sector swinging it overnight YOLO. There were times like that where I'm taking more size than you'll ever see in your entire life in your account, okay? If we want to be a smart ass. The rest of the time I don't trade because I'm not a fucking dumbass. Because I'm not one of these YouTubers who's just trying to entertain you. I'm, I'm here to, to give you guys education, some shit that works, that works for me, works for my students for real. Billy, look at Billy right now, dumbass. Even now, he's holding like, I was just up of two bucks a share. No, <laughs> you know, get the fuck out of here, you guys. Sorry, boy, put me into a little bit of a little bit of a rant. No trade on BDRX. Nope. Y'all can y'all can trade a bunch of bullshit if you want, and you're gonna make no money. And then you're gonna be blaming other people for how much you suck and say penny stocks are a scam, which they fucking are. And I've tried to explain to you why they are. And if you know that they're a scam, how to take advantage of it. Okay. Very rare I trade on Monday mornings too. Monday mornings for me, big time day to see what the markets are going to bring me. Okay. I don't mind. I don't mind haters and I don't mind people. I love people who come in and talk like that because, because it's important to understand there's levels to this game and the actual people who are actually good at trading don't trade every day, period. There's not setups every day. Let's go through the top percent gainers. RDHL, where's my setup? We already looked at it together, right? Super extended, already a breakout area, okay? Already a breakout area. So if it goes, it just fucking goes without me. I won't trade breakouts. I'm not gonna trade with a bunch. Where's my edge here? You tell me. You tell me where there's edge, I'll tell you where there's a trade or not. You tell me where you want to trade. I'll tell you if there's edge there or not. And I can tell you in this area, there's none. I'm just joining the rest of these fucking buffoons long and short. Does that make sense? Let me know, please, those of you who understand. Sometimes I'm too patient and I don't get the pools that I want and I don't get the risk reward that I want. And if that is the case, I don't trade. It's really, really that simple. It's really that simple, period. End of story. I don't take stupid losses for no reason. I don't just trade for no fucking reason. 
In fact, we're only looking at charts for another 10, 15 more minutes, and then we're going to move on to other lessons. Everyone can thank Homeboy. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I know that for a lot of you, it makes perfectly clear sense. So this is what I'd need, something like that, to give me something a little bit better in my eyes. And it never gave it to me. And when it doesn't give it to me, I don't fucking trade it. That simple. Are there times where I'm trading this area, you guys, in the morning? Of course, you see it. You guys see it all the time. Are there times where I'm trading this area, trying to play the dip buy? But I got to have good conviction in the markets. I have to have good conviction in the markets to be dip buying that. Does that make sense, everyone? So yeah, I could still risk in the morning areas like this. Okay. Sure. But the juice isn't as worth the squeeze. If this makes sense, please let me know if this makes sense to you. All anyone buying it right now. It is what it is. Let's get into uh, some other stuff actually quickly. Did NIR fit one of my patterns? Let's check it out. I did see it on the scan this morning. I didn't get to get a full pre-market in. Um, is what it is. Cat ass, do I even trade? What am I up? 40 something grand this month? 50 grand something? Maybe more? Seventeen hundred in losses, something like that, something ridiculous. Because I don't trade stupid shit, and I don't trade when stocks don't come to me, and I don't trade when the risk reward isn't there, and I don't trade when the filings are all fucked up, and I don't trade when there's no catalyst, and I don't, and I don't, and I don't, and I don't trade when it's already going through high day, and I don't trade when it morning spikes. Okay. There are way, way, way more scenarios where I'm not trading than I'm trading. Okay. No, I love haters and trolls, especially in this realm of idiots. Take that all day. Just not a lot of range. Yeah, bottom bouncer. I don't see any PRs here. Trust me, I've been doing this game, guys, for a long, long time. And I've been dealing with bitch-ass trolls for a long, long time and haters. Ignorant idiots. And I, I've got no time for them, you know?
BDRX, Billy got fucked again. If he didn't sell. Billy, aka, we'll start calling Billy Cookie maybe from now on. I like that. I'll start calling this guy Cookie. There's Cookie right here, who needs to trade every day. Cookie needs to trade. There's Cookie. <laughs> the blast is full. The best reversals for me. If you want a better explanation, Billy, other than me to just shit on your face right now. Uh, the, if you want a better explanation, the fact is most of the best reversals for the last five to six months haven't come until about 10 or 11 p.m. or a.m. 11 a.m., noon, 1 p.m. Eastern are about when I've been taking most of my positions for the last few months. So... So there's another reason that for a lot of the pre-market preps and the morning sessions, you have not seen me place trades. And if you look through my body of work, which I've made a shit ton of money this month with losing very, very little due to the risk reward profiles of all the trades, and there have been many of them this month, you'll see most of those were taken in the afternoon. So there's more of a reason than just you're a douchebag. Okay. Um... Doon, 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 and doon. Moving on. Awesome, Norway. What's up, buddy? Okay. Hey, just ignore this. Uh, just ignore that idiot so I can see your questions. We're going to open up to Q&A now completely, by the way. Billy's been renamed Cookie for the day, so that's that'll be fun. And Cookie's been stopped out because it went back through low a day, and that's his only strategy. At least it happens once a day, so he can trade once a day, but he will not make money over time. Alejandro said, I want to say... Uh, but then in the room where I short sell with Mike, he pretty much has the same things you do, but on the other side. And patience is a big one. Is it uh, Spinoza? By chance? What's up with Thar? Anyone know? They did have positive phase one data, it looks like. Hmm.
Yeah, that's a reverse split pump. Right there. Reverse split pump, you guys. Reverse split pump. So these guys just split, okay? These guys just split. This is one of the strategies we've been talking about because it's been here all fucking year. And if you don't understand this, you need to understand this for 2024. It's one of the main things you need to understand for 2024. Why? Well, it's what we go back, talked about earlier. Look at this. Okay. So every single, and we're going to start getting into some macro stuff. Now we're going to start getting into the big picture going into 2024. Okay. The big picture going into 2024, the things that you need to know, the setups that you need to know going into next year. These are going to be the most important things. In my opinion, if you're going to be growing um, a smaller account, if you're trying to get exponential, if you're trying to have bigger gains, whatever your goals are for 2024, there's only a few scenarios that you really, really need to be to understand to get in line with what's going to happen next year. Okay. This is the first part of that. Okay. The first part of that is the life cycle of these stocks that we keep talking about. They're pump and dumps. Okay. They're pump and dumps. Every single one of these needs you and I, they need you and I to survive. There are so many of them. 632 right now stocks okay 632 stocks under under a buck right now on my scan 632 stocks that need to get back over a dollar to maintain compliance okay that need to get back over a dollar to maintain compliance and the only way to do that the only way to do that is to do a split okay is to do a split That's what this is, okay? So THAR, for example. THAR is one of those tickers, okay? THAR did a one for 25 split, THAR, on November 21st, okay? So on November 21st, sorry. So on November 21st, they were, uh, what, 350? They were a 14 cent stock, you guys, four days ago. Okay, 14 cents. These guys were 14 cents. So they do a split. They do a split. They took every share. They took every 25 shares and turned it into one share. All right, that made got got their their share price up to the 350s. It brought their float size way down. Okay, at which point they just need to hold a buck for 10 days. These guys just need to hold a dollar for 10 days. This is such a, such a, such a big scenario, guys. It's so fucking important. It's so important. Please let me know in chat if you understand. Please let me know in chat if you guys understand this. I really hope this makes sense to you guys, okay? 
But in the lifespan of these companies, for the most part, this is the only part of the company of the, the lifespan that I care about. Okay. This whole time, well, that's not true. Not these days. There's more to it these days. If you look here, these guys also went from 450 to 950 on the 24th of October. That wasn't actually that. We got to divide it by 15, right? So they went from what, 30 cents to 80 cents or, you know, 90 cents, whatever it was. Does that make sense? 30 cents to 60, 70 cents. Okay. This is the split. This is what, this is the one time when I know I can predict a PR. This is the one time when I know I can predict a PR where I am Martha Stewart, <laughs> you know, basically an insider. Please let me know if that makes sense. I'm going to do a very in detail lesson on this uh, setup going forward, but. Here's the pump. This is the pump. This is reverse split pump. My MO is to load if I can on the way down on these and they become a swing trade. Twos, ones, the premise that they're going to try to hold a buck or they're going to PR at some point. Does it always come? No. Am I always playing it? No. Did I play it a lot this month? Yes. Okay. Made a lot of money off this swing idea this month. Okay. And the idea is, is that once it gaps, it gets a little bit more difficult to play. The day, like today, is more difficult to play. Where am I buying this right up in here, personally? When I look at a ticker like this, okay? Does that make sense? Outside of this, I don't care too much about these tickers outside of these scenarios. There's more to it though. Okay, because what we're seeing, and we're seeing it on the scan, is this toxic dilution thing going on, right? Okay, that is why, by the way, even though the markets right now are sitting at all-time highs again, okay, I have more penny stocks than I have ever seen in my life, you guys. I've never had this many penny stocks on my scan in my life. And that's why I believe it's going to be such a powerful scenario to understand going into next year. Really, really understand it, okay? That there are certain times to make money on these plays, and that's it. And this is the time. Look, drop, drop, drop. And my MO has been loading these things. Right? But if I wanted to play it today, I could. And here's how I would. And still might. Pretty much this is the idea right here. We're at the idea for now. Whether or not it would pan out. But... We're pretty much at the idea at the moment. My only idea on something like this. Again, that is just big picture. Does this make sense? Let me know in chat, y'all. Big picture. That's what I, I start working off big picture first. Really big picture is also this, technically speaking, right? Here's big picture. <laughs> Big, big picture. If I walk away today, could be back down at three tomorrow. Totally could be. Could they do an offering? Totally they could. Okay. C-H-A-R. Very basic idea here, if I wanted to work off of it. So, super fucking important, guys, if I want to be playing this area. Get good risk reward to fir my first target, which in this case, VWAP or so, right? Sell into VWAP, sell into high of day, sell into all the cookies along the way today, right? Boom. Simple enough, okay? 
that's the idea for me at least. So entry, I need to kind of dial in. I would use low a day as a risk personally from here, even though you've got kind of this little support area. So in this instance, right? In this instance. In this instance, what, one to five if we get straight to highs off a low a day, right? But watch this drop. This is why this, to me, the entry, really nailing my entries down and why I don't trade that much if I'm not, becomes so important, you know? I'm trying to get, you guys, when I trade, I'm trying to get one to three minimum to my first target, which in this case is VWAP. One to three minimum, which in this case is VWAP. For me first target okay which means entry discipline entry needs to be in the 380s where's the stock trading at right now four please let me know if this makes sense please This is the idea that dictates everything that I do. I let everyone else be undisciplined. I let everyone else just take random trades and do willy nilly shit. I know what the big picture is here in small cap. Okay. I know what the big picture is, which is we are the dumpies. I'm not going to be that for no reason. My, my results have been so on point lately because of this precision, because of my ability to say, you know what, it's not setting up right. The risk reward isn't good. I don't have good feels today, whatever the reason is. Most of you, if you suck at trading, need to figure out reasons to not trade. Okay. Uh, Solo asked, how do I, uh, nobody talks about position size. How do I set up position size on each trade? That It's a big deal to me too, okay? it's And it's going to be reliant upon a lot of things. The markets, first of all, are they ripe for me to be sizing up, okay? Um, And this is just general position size. When it comes down to the trade itself, very basic, very basic math. How many, how many shares am I risking or how much do I want to risk on the trade? That's and that is preconceived, okay? That is preconceived based on everything else, the catalysts, um the markets, the sector, the runners, all that good stuff. At which point, once we get to this idea, now we're just playing basic math. How many shares can I get to risk that much from where we're at? Is it worth it? Those two questions are the what I start to ask myself, right? In other words, if I want to risk $1,000, my marker is always 10,000 shares, 10 cents. 10 cents, 10,000 shares, $1,000. For some people, it's going to be less. For most of you, it's way less. Okay. Um, But I'm a big proponent of when the markets are right for it, when we have great markets, okay, when we have great ideas, when there are setups that I am, when I'm doing great and my setups are particularly in play, A++ is when I'm going to be trying to size up, take bigger losses, take bigger wins, okay? But I'm still always playing that same game. What's that number? Okay, how many shares can I get? Here's the most important thing for me. By being that extra patient, okay, by getting that one to five, one to eight, okay, instead of being this idiot who just likes to buy it because I have nothing to trade and I don't know what to do and I'm bored as fuck, okay, and I'm not going to make money forever, literally because I'm going to trade mid-range garbage for the rest of my being, trying to make dumb things work against computers and hedge funds and institutional investors that are designed to fuck you over. This is the biggest picture that you guys have to understand. Y'all be putting your money long all the time in these tickers thinking what? You got the next Microsoft today or some shit? You're going to change your life today? You're not. 
For me, it's about the next thousand trades, doing something profitable over time, getting extreme risk reward scenarios on extreme piece of shit companies. And if I'm not getting that, I'm not trading. Period, point blank. End of story, guys. There's no two ways about it. There's no two ways about it. We are pawns. And if you are doing all these things that everyone does, buying breakouts, buying cup and handles and buying ascending wedge patterns and buying this and buying that and buying the VWAP break and the VWAP dip and the dip and rip and the gip. If you're doing all those things up near highs or into strength, you are just a sheep in this game. You are just a pawn. You are giving money. And what do I, how do I dictate what that is? Well, you're Billy, you're cookie. You're selling to, you're capitulating at lows when I'm buying right? And you're buying my shares when I'm selling through high a day. Period. Point blank in the story. You're either in harmony with the short sellers or you're not. You're either just looking for squeezes, which makes you a breakout buyer, in which case you're fucked. You're Billy still. You're still cookie. They go together. Okay. Does that make sense? You're still fucked. No matter what. I don't care what anyone says. Over time. Okay, let everyone please let me know in chat if that makes sense, please. Please, please let me know. But it is the discipline when getting back to that position sizing comment. It is, it is the discipline for me to wait for those moments where we get that fear. And I get extreme amounts of risk reward where I can take more and more and more and more and more shares the closer it gets to my risk. I hope you understand that. It's math. It's basic math. I'm trying to teach you guys to buy low, sell high. It is what it is. <laughs> is Cookie even still here? Why is Cookie here? There's like a bunch, by the way, there are a bunch of YouTubers pumping stocks right now. If you want to go join one of those, like have some fucking respect, you know, I, I tried, I, I tried to answer the question, um, nicely. And then it is what it is. Be a douchebag clearing, you know, clogging up the chat and shit. He's probably from one of these pumper services because they've probably taken pumpers, you know, his little pawns away from him or whatever. Who knows? No more energy from me, though. Decent holds there on RDHL for now. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, one second. Uh, we're going to get into a few more things here in a sec. Yes, ST ended up popping, huh? It did end up popping. It was just a liquid. Okay. Scan rolling again. Dang, BDRX. BDRX, nice. Again, even when Billy's right, Billy's wrong. That's a whole that's a whole deal here, right? Mm. Everyone be nice to Cookie, man. We were I was once Cookie too, you know. And listen, Cookie. 
Don't take it personal, bro. It's just I came here to teach, and I don't, uh, and when I get to the comments and someone's trying to throw shit off, if this were my chat, we would just kick you out. It'd be easy, but this isn't my chat. It's a public forum, which is the whole point. That's why I'm here. Boom. Nice. Short squeeze. Whole point here is this, though, right? The whole point here is this. Beautiful. So now all these guys, if they didn't cover into the weakness, they're buyers, right? Um, and we got a crap ton of billies, right? Every single billy goat and they're every guru on the planet just bought this shit, guys, just to let you know. And what were we supposed to be doing? Who's selling some? Anyone have some, by the way? Y'all tell me. Any of my students in here? Because here's the thing, the shit that I teach works without me. I don't have to trade the stuff that I teach for it to work completely. And I do trade it. That's how I know it works. <laughs> I trade it for a living. I trade it to feed my family. Okay? That's how I know it works. Cooper selling. Harley already bought and sold. Beautiful. Look at that. Giggity nailed it. Not a boy, giggity. You guys understand that I'm supposed to be selling right now? Selling to Billy? Trade that this would be max trade worked perfectly. Bonus territory, buy patience, could hold some shares if I want for a buck or something like that. But that's it. Okay? That's it. And if I had billions of shares to dump, millions of shares to dump, I'm dumping them there too. Sweet. There we go, Nat. Beautiful. Sold the view app, sold I day. Yep. Look at that. Booyah. Oh, and look who's just so upset right now, right? Look at that. Look at this, guys. Look at this. And do you know who steps back in now? Short, Mr. Short Seller always. Right? It's the dynamic. And then don't forget, big picture, always. Sorry, here's Billy. Dang, all right. So at this point in the week, at this point now in the morning, let's see here.
Yeah. They broke the low down here, higher low. And then a perfect, it looks like they even broke the low down there, barely on that big crack. So definitely a bit of a miss there for me, in my opinion, kind of looking back. Well. But congrats to those who did take it. Beautiful. Very rare that I'm placing trades on Monday mornings. But now I can say, here's what I do, okay? Here's what I do. I'm using, always I'm using Monday morning to get these feels of what's going to run, how far it's going to run, what the patterns are. Hey, Boo, can I get a new coffee, please? I think I heard her. So... Let's see here. I use these as an opportunity, guys, Monday mornings, to tell me what the markets are going to do. Tell me what the markets are going to do. I don't try to jump in front of stuff and just trade. My favorite time to trade was in the morning. Like just the first minute. I was just so amped back in the day. I just wanted to be in something, you know, like a lot of you. Right out the gate. Now what now... You know, and what I realized over time, and I didn't start getting paid consistently and having good ideas consistently until I started waiting five, 10, 15 minutes. Let all, let all the, the new emotional traders shake themselves out, do their things and set the levels for me. Even RDHL, 15, 20 minutes into the day, 30 minutes set levels pretty clearly and clearly was messing with people. Broke a high day and failed, broke a low a day and failed. Huh? Right, which tells me what algorithms probably broke low a day again and then now through high a day. Okay, and this is the problem. And this action here, you guys, and please smash the like if you guys are watching, you haven't hit the like yet. Please hit the like, uh, make sure you're subscribed so you guys don't miss my upcoming webinars and stuff like that that we throw. But understand, just understand these principles. Understand this is not a buy to me. This is where everyone buys. Bunch of idiots all the time. For me. Go on YouTube. Watch other streams. I don't care. Watch whatever you want. And you're going to see people buying in these areas consistently. Over and over. And those people who are learning buys in those areas were probably buying it like here. You know what I mean? And then dumping into their... P it's like a big joke. It's a big joke. The whole community in terms of stock trading and picking and calling in my eyes. Especially small cap. They don't even know how these things work. You guys don't even know how these fucking things work. Okay. You guys want to talk about how they work one more time? <laughs> Do you guys need to talk about who here doesn't understand how small cap works and the players that are involved? Who doesn't know who this is and why? Once you understand this principle that it's being controlled. Okay. Once you understand the principle that all this, this is being controlled and it's designed to screw shorts and it's designed to screw longs and keep volume churning and we get massive amounts of volume this has done over 80 million fucking shares this morning guys 80 million shares it's an hour into the day Penny stocks, small cap, sm are small cap for a reason, okay? Penny stocks and small cap are small cap for a reason. The reason is because they dilute. They need money, but they don't have revenue. They have terrible earnings, okay? They have terrible earnings. There's no such thing as a real earnings winner. I mean, technically RDHL had earnings today, right? But they also announced this FDA grant, okay? says earnings, but
Either way, these companies have terrible, terrible earnings, okay? They don't make money. But they need money, just like any other company. They need money. So to fund everything that they do, they put out PRs, okay? These companies, they put out PRs for us to fucking chase around. All these little starry-eyed idiots and to bring in the short sellers. All of retail. They want us trading it all together, okay? Once we're all funneled into these stocks that are trading PRs and that they've gapped 100, 200% on the day, they churn the volume. So they break high a day to bring in all of these, all of retail essentially, like we talked about first thing this morning. These billies, look at the volume. Look at the volume. Please look at the volume, you guys, through highs. Look, do you see this volume through high right there? Biggest volume of the day on that high day break this morning, right there. Y'all can see that, yeah? Let me know in chat, please. Ooh, Billy, no! <laughs> oh my God, right? Smash the like for that, for Billy, RIP. This Billy right here was the best one. That's the one like, yep! Oh, that's exactly what I said earlier. Exactly what I said earlier. I don't care what anyone says. You see it enough, you keep seeing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Every fucking day like I do. And then you don't trade. Oh, by the way, this is where I am right here. Maybe here. This is where the buy is. I'm not trading. Out of principle, I'm not trading. Okay? A part of me did want to show a cookie. Like, I do trade a lot, actually, when I need to, but it's all good. My buddy Cookie. It's all good. That's why I'm here. I'm actually here to explain why I don't trade every day. So I apologize if I was came off a little harsh. I'm just not used to uh, that question too often, you know? Because most of the people who are with me understand exactly why. <laughs> and this is why, okay? Look at that, guys. And gals. Everyone see that in chat? Let me know. Let me know. Please comment RIP Billy for me. Best uh best tombstone message for Billy gets a hundred dollars L right now. <laughs> Anyways, um Does that make sense, you guys? Please. Let me know. It's absolutely beautiful when you get to see it over and over and over and over. And why I say up there, I'm only supposed to be selling shares. Please let me know if this makes sense. Please hit the like if you haven't hit the like. Okay. It's important. Helps with algo and stuff like that. Stupid algos. and. But I'm out here trying to save more of you billies from destruction like this. Okay. Hey, everyone leave Cookie alone, for reals. Cookie's fine, man. I got no problems with Cookie. It's all good. It's literally why I'm here, is to talk to people like that specifically. And it's fine if he has questions and wants to know why I don't trade. Everyone sells that this is what you do, and you do it every day, and I get it. And if you're watching Monday pre-market preps, the truth is I don't trade very many Monday mornings. So if all you do is tune in for pre-market preps on Mondays, or you get to see the couple of live, oh, maybe two or three live webinars that I've actually put on YouTube because I live trade every single day for my wolf pack at least, right? I live trade every single day, Monday through Friday. So they see me on weeks where I'm trading heavily, hot and heavy every single day. And they see me on weeks where I literally am not trading and I'm sitting on my hands because it's either I'm not feeling it or the markets aren't there or a combination of the two, okay? Dude, enough with the set. No one's cyberbullying anyone. <laughs> it's a stream. Everyone chill. <laughs> Cyberbullies. Put 
But it is a bit rude to come and disrupt everyone for your own personal agenda or whatever's going on over there. In my eyes as well. Okay. That's the that's the thing to me. I just don't like when people are getting in the way of other people's. You know, same thing in the chat, you guys. Like, you guys know the rules in my chat, which is I don't I want people to talk. I want people to have discussions, meaningful discussions and stuff like that. I want people to get to know each other and make friends. And I don't want it to be like you can't talk, you can't do anything. I want that. And the only the only rule I've ever had in that room, and still to this day, the only rule that I've ever had is don't screw with the pack. Don't screw with everyone else who's trying to learn or trade. That's all, you know, if outside of that, I don't care. Everyone's great. You know what I mean? Okay, we've got a moderator for the channel now, so we won't have to worry about that happening anymore, y'all, just to let you know. You know, that's why I'm here at the end of the day. It's not for any other reason but to get through to some of these billy goats. Okay. I'm a crazy man. Hey, I'm going to ask that no one talk shit to each other anymore in the, in the chat. If anyone talks shit, um, I'll just have Tanner boot, start booting everyone. All right. That's not what this is. I'm that's not what I'm about. It's not what the pack's ever been about. Okay. I apologize. Cookie. Everyone apologize to cookie right now. That's what I need. Everyone apologize to cookie. Oh, Cookie, we love him or her and that he or she should join the pack and, and enjoy what we know to be true. Thank you, guys. There we go. Now let's move on, okay? Let's move on. See, we love you, Cookie. Boom. All right. Um, uh, that being said, let's see if they run it back up to highs again, right? The whole point is, is that there are only certain spots on these things to be. This is that has been the spot this morning, obviously. So, what is going on behind these scenes? Let's do that quickly. Oh crap, my dang Schwab closed. That's cool. Okay, dilution tracker. We're going to do a quick lesson because we're going to keep talking about this macro. All right, y'all.
Can y'all see my dilution tracker? This is the tool that I use for just about everything. All right. Just about everything. Let's see what's going on, okay? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, big picture, at the end of the day, the big picture of all these companies is that there's someone around, okay? The company itself, usually, okay? They have an agenda. They have an agenda. When they put out PRs, there's always an agenda. When they bring in volume like this, there's always an agenda. Right now, they're trying to get off these lows, obviously, get back towards a buck, but they're probably going to do a split soon instead they're likely diluting or something like that let's get back in the daily chart i don't see any big gap downs recently which is kind of interesting i do see a gap down back here i do see also they did a split here okay so again whenever i see a split and we're, let's talk about macro stuff when i'm breaking down a daily chart there are two things i look for only two things gap downs okay and splits Gap downs and splits. Both of them tell me there might be dilution because of that. Does that make sense? Hopefully that lets, hopefully uh, that makes sense to you guys. What these companies have to do is get money from us. So they put out a PR and get back to get back to our story. This happens, ton of volume. So if you have millions of shares to dump, this is the day that you do it. Does that make sense to everyone? Let me know in chat, please. Okay, big deal. And that's why I play them a certain way. I got to be near lows. I got to be near, you know, a higher low at max. I've got to get good risk reward with what I'm doing because it's a pump. Okay. It's a pump. They're going to dump shares. That's how they put money in their pocket. The institutional investors, they dump. They're, they're the ones who get these shares at cheap and cheap and cheaper prices. Especially these days, there's convertible shares, which hopefully maybe RDHL has some. Okay. Then at some point, once these guys, I call these guys HC Wainwright or your institutional investors, the people who are who are doing these offerings, facilitating these offerings, okay. At some point they're gonna have an agenda, and I believe they're running the algos and doing this stuff personally. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty damn sure. Just understanding the macro and what goes on in small cap and then watching how these things trade. Right? When you watch retail, when you watch levels where you're like, oh, that's supposed to break out and go, get screwed over that badly, time and time and time again, you guys, come on. It's it's undeniable. I'm sorry. It's undeniable. It's unfucking deniable to me, at least. Look at this. Look at the volume. Look at the volume. We keep talking about it. Look at this volume. Look at this volume. Okay. Look at the corresponding volume. Biggest volume of the day here. Does that make sense? Let me know in chat, please. So what's my MO on these? I can play this area still. What I'd rather do is kind of let this go on into mid towards midday now. What time is it? It's almost 10. Uh, my time. It's almost 11 a.m. Eastern, right? So I can play this. Set a stop, walk away. Okay. This idea. I'd rather kind of wait into the afternoon, watch what they do with these levels, see if they kind of pull them again. Okay. All right. There he is, my man. There's Cookie. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, buddy. See, guys? Doesn't always have to be confrontational. Why can't we all just get along once in a while? I come, and, and you guys, and a lot of, so a lot of the people in this room are my students and stuff like that, who have already, who already have seen me, who watch me trade, and who already understand everything. You know what I mean? But that's, I'm on here for people like him, not for people like you. So that's I, what I have to remind myself as well. You know, I trade live every single day. So I'm used to a certain cadence with my students and stuff like that. And this isn't that. This is a public forum. And that's why I'm here. It's to be with the public. So I appreciate it, buddy. 
All's good. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. Just look at these top percent gainers one more time. And then we're going to go back to um, look at some filings really fast and watch, look at some macro stuff. Okay. Understand how these stocks work and stuff like that. BDRX, nice, holding up nice. Again, it's just no edge for me up there and dangerous. Could I buy it right now, BDRX, walk away, no stop, be fine tomorrow? That's how I define, is it risky or not? <laughs> like really risky at the end of the day, okay? Can I set stops and do stuff? Yeah, I'm not doing it. There's no, there's no point, right? RX, RDHL, ASST, THAR. I wanna, uh, that's the one that I wanted to peek at maybe one more time. We've seen some of these recent splits be a little lackluster, but if, here, and here's the thing. You can understand now if you watch, like, when you're getting a good swing, if you can build good swings on these, that's where the edge really lies on the split still, is if you can get in prior to PRs, Okay get in prior to PRs. You're going to start seeing Billy everywhere, by the way. And just don't be Billy. For those who aren't my student, who will never be my student, and you're just here to get a little bit of info on how to buy stocks and stuff like that, particularly small cap. If you can just not, please, if you can just not buy high a day breaks, if you can just not buy pre-market highs, if you can just not just focus on breakouts and breakouts and breakouts and strength and strength and strength, the game changes completely. The game changes completely, okay? There's no good psychology up there. There's no good trading psychology trading RDHL, okay? People are so concerned. I So I'm a big proponent. The more I do this and the more I've been working with people one-on-one -on, -one on their trading psychology every single day. It's what I do, okay? And with my group, every single Friday, we do trader therapy. Maybe I'll post one of those episodes for YouTube so they can see one of them. But that we would do a lot of work on, on trading psychology, okay? Super, super important trading psychology, right? This heart's getting bright here. But before you can have good trading psychology, you got to have better entries. You have to have better ideas. You have to have decent strategies that actually work in your favor. You have to give yourself areas where there's margin of error, okay? I talk about this all the time now. That's something I never thought about. How easy is the trade? Does that make sense? How easy is the trade? How easy does it feel? How easy is it to get executed? Does that make sense? Please let me know. Not how thrilling is it. It's the opposite. How easy? How, how relaxed can I be? Now we're going to talk about competing with robots. What do algorithms work off of? What do, what do these hedge funds work off of? What do these institutional investors, what are they working off of? Someone tell me in chat, please. What are they working off of? How do they profit? Uh, data, yeah. Definitely a lot of data. Emotions. They know we're emotional at certain levels, especially. They learn where our stops are. Straight up. Really easy. Very easy. We don't change them. You guys come in, you put your stops at the same places. Very easy. Okay? Very, very easy. We're so predictable. It's the only way to get out of that. 
is to put yourself in other places. Who's a dip buyer now? Um, who used to be Billy? And who can attest to how much easier the trading is? Both on your emotions, on your account, on your losses, on the wins. What is easier? Buying a breakout? Buying high day breaks? Buying ascendant wedge breaks? Because there's no there's no comparison to me in terms of what the trades feel like. I, if I trade a breakout, it still sucks. I have amazing trade psychology a lot of the time. But if I trade a breakout, I'm put into that. I'm put in. You cannot escape the psychology of the chart just because you have good fucking psychology. Please let me know if that makes sense in chat. And hit the like. That's some deep shit right there. <laughs> I'm serious. You cannot. You cannot. I don't care what anyone says. There's no good trading psychology buying here. There's no good trading psychology buying here. 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 Please let me know. Please. It's so important. It's so important. You think you're just going to be the one, just the one who trades them and has great psychology there? <laughs> the only way to have good say, trading psychology with a breakout is just to cut where you're supposed to cut if you can find the right level to do that at, okay? And then even then, where is the margin of error? Look at the margin of error from here. Do you see it? It's very simple. Look at this margin of error, okay? This is what I mean. When my first target's VWAP, my second target's high day, whatever it is, whatever this ends up being looking like for me, and I'm trading off lows, and I'm wrong, and v and it doesn't get to high day, but it gets to VWAP, I make money. When it goes to VWAP and high day, and I sell at both of those levels, and it doesn't get to pre-market highs, I make money. When it only goes to VWAP and I sell too little, and then it pops, I've de-risked. I still lose less. Does that make sense? The only thing that can happen when I'm buying a breakout, if it doesn't go straight up, is I'm going to have to sit through chop first off. And if I'm wrong, I bought the fucking top. Okay? If I'm right, I don't know where to sell. I don't have price targets. Do you understand this? And Billy sees only this in his eyes. Does that make sense? This guy, this noob who just bought the new high, only sees that. It's going up. It's going to keep going up. That's like so archaic. So what I used to be, I don't make fun of these people. That's why even with my man Cookie here, I get it. I understand. <clears throat> I wanted to trade every day, all day. I wanted to get over PDT so I could just trade all day. That's what I thought. I thought I could just trade all fucking day and make take money all day. It's not the case. And then I, and then I found one of the biggest accomplishments for me was the first day I didn't trade at all once I got over PDT because I started over trading quite a bit. Okay. What's that? Serious question. My idea of support was wrong in RDH because I did not mark. Yeah, this is marked earlier. This is clear. Low day. I've just been moving the lines around and stuff like that. All right. I've had it sitting like this for a while. I'm saying this is what Billy sees. Right? Not us. Ah. Got me. Is three to one risk reward a good start? It's it's a it's a good start, but again, here's the key to me. Here's what you really, 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 really have to understand. Okay, it's not just getting one to three. It's where am I getting that one to three, right? To be honest, one to three is not great. For it's better than having no idea of that for sure. But I am trying to get bigger risk reward profiles than that over time. 
over time, okay? I'm trying to get one to five, one to 10 repeatedly over and over again, one to seven, one to eight to my first target, which in this case is VWAP, which in this case means if I'm gonna use these lows, I need an entry of uh, for VWAP now at this point, because VWAP's moved up. Oh, it's about the same size, same, right? And we're just sitting at VWAP already, right? You know, I would need to get 68 something. If that makes sense. The cheaper the stock, the more important it is that I'm pre precise with these pennies and half pennies. Okay. It's always been that way for me. PDRX holding up again, RDHL, ASST, THAR. I'll still be watching this kind of in the close. But again, I should have made money on this the way I look at it from a swing potentially. Okay. Potentially. Have a good one, Robert. Yep, that's right. I'm trying to let low a day base and set, right? Even THAR. You know, potentially I would use this area at this point. Sometimes in the morning as well. Whenever I'm seeing them reverse, which honestly I've been traveling the last couple of weeks. I haven't been as in tune, which would be another reason for somewhat of my lack of um, activity at the moment. My dad's been sick in the hospital, so I had to, you know, was obviously in Phoenix with the family for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. But this is the idea, okay? The theme of today for me is that the billies of the world don't make money. And they talk about, they read, they read, <laughs> how many trading psychology books has Billy read? He's read it. Trading in the zone, you know? Trade like this, trade like that, you know? Systematic this and system. But then he just trades breakouts, you guys. Ow. Had like a back spasm. Holy shit. But then he just trades breakouts. Okay? And like, oh, I'm not in the zone. No, you're just trading a very, very emotional part of a chart. You can't overcome the chart psychology, in other words. Particularly to the long side in a, in a situation like this. The way things... Look at this bouncing, by the way, back over VWAP. Do you guys see? Look at this, right? Who's starting to understand how things flow now? The flow. There's flow. There's flow, guys. There's flow. You got to get into it. You got to understand it. Okay. <clears throat> but if we want to tra start trading more systematically, okay? If we want to get out of this... Every trade's so manic and stressful all the time. We have to put ourselves in different positions. We have to put ourselves in areas that are less stressful, where we're not chasing. In and of itself, you're buying through high a day. Do you know who else is buying? Do you know who's buying this? Guess who's buying this right here? Someone tell me. No. Everyone. That's the answer. Everyone is buying this. All these short sellers from the morning, these short sellers if they didn't cover, these short sellers if they didn't cover, all of these shorts if they didn't cover, and this thing has been doing 50, 70, 80 million shares by then, right? All of these billies cut, they're all buying back in. They're using their last day trade. It's going down. I was wrong. I was totally right. I just, I got it shaken out. You know what I mean? The whole shit, all the shit, all the terrible stuff going on with the psychology. And everyone bought that. All of these people, all these shorts, all these longs. But then straight back under high day again. So who the hell, right? Who the hell? And in my eyes, it's always this dude, right? 
we always forget what's up there. And in my eyes, it's always that it looks like this. Uh, does that make sense, you guys? Please let me know. And please smash a like if you haven't. And you're getting something from this and not trying to understand the big picture and why you can't trade these stocks that are explosive, that are explosive and can be amazing and give you tremendous amounts of intraday volatility for the price. Yeah. It's a big deal. Everyone thinks these things are just going to the moon. You know what I mean? And they're just not at the end of the day. So. You guys want to go to dilution tracker now? Let's rock. Okay. But listen, you guys understand this dynamic. You're going to be ahead of 99% of small cap retail longs. Don't know shit. Don't know anything. Don't care to learn about what these stocks actually do. Or maybe they just spent a lot of money on education somewhere and they're not being taught that for some reason. Okay. Or they just don't know. Huge volume days. Range bound. Highs go to lows. Lows go to highs. New lows go to new highs. And new highs go to new lows. Tells me usually algorithmic pretty quickly. I can say that. Right? And then it's just like, all right, what are these assholes doing today? You know what I mean? What are these assholes doing today? But I know... That when they're there, I know that when they're there, I do need to just proceed with caution. You know what I mean? How many shares do they have to dump? Where would I dump them if I had the shares, y'all? So important. Yeah, we do. We have uh, our Cyber Monday sales going today. It's the only day of the sale, and it's our last sale. And it's, a, it's the biggest sale we've ever done, 40% if you want to be in the pack. I live trade Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, most times twice a day. So I'll do the morning pre-market prep 30 minutes before the open. I trade live uh, the first hour and a half, two hours of every single day. Again, some days you're going to see me trading heavily for the whole week. Just trade, 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 trade. Overnights, sector momentum, whatever it is. Some weeks, very little trading. Some weeks, one a day. Some, you know, and that's the whole point is that you get to see me through all different states all year um not only give you commentary lives to try to help keep you guys safe in this fashion help keep you remind you that don't be billy okay also to help you understand the ebbs and flows of the setups like reverse split pump okay re -E, i was buying in here because of sg uh, because of lifw that is what lifw reverse split pump okay this is the scenario we keep talking about. Look at this. We're talking about it. Even now, okay? We keep talking about it. Even now, today, THAR. Look at THAR, right? Reverse split pump, technically speaking. Still looking at that. I still don't hate that for maybe a push towards high day or something like that. But, in other words, I'm not just playing every split all day, every day. Okay? But because LIFW on a Monday, remember, it was on a Monday. Because LIFW went from 3 to 17 that Monday. You know, I ended up taking some re. I ended up making 30-something thousand dollars from this trade, guys. From the swing on this. So it's not all the time. And it looks like I piked it because it looks like they're pumping it too. It's about to break out or something like that, but. I hope that makes sense, okay? I hope that makes sense. Gap and crop reversal never went away. The early morning 15-minute gap and crop reversal did go away, yes. But it's morphed into a 5-minute pattern, a 15-minute pattern. Um, which I've been using it as such. I've still been using it actually quite, quite well on 5 and 15-minute time frames. Even NIR, look at this. They broke the low here and, and popped it back to uh, VWAP. It's not a lot of range, so I don't care too much. But not too much else on the scan at the moment. 
but bottom bouncers, reverse split pumps, okay? Um, first green days after parabolics have been big. SPACs we've been seeing even running a, a little bit again, right? Does that make sense to everyone? So, in other words, sorry, one second, y'all. One second, my friends. Sorry about that. Do I trade live voice or with video? Video every day, every single day that I can. This this setup on the stream today is just for today's special Cyber Monday little ditty. But normally I'll have my orders up, you know, my uh, P&Ls up. My positions pop up on the screens for you, all the good stuff so that you can see in real time, like what exactly is going on, you know, watch me cut in real time, how fast it is. Not the problem with alerts. You just don't, you don't get to see anything. You don't get, really get a feel at all. And it's always late and pumpy. It ends up being pumped to a bunch of people is the problem. My strategies work in a bubble. My strategies literally work without me. That's the whole point of what I do. And why I teach in the first place. If I knew, if it didn't work without me, I wouldn't teach it. At the end of the day, we need to figure out how to sell to highs. If you can figure out how to sell through and to highs, you're ahead of the curve. All right. We've only got, my wife just reminded me, I've got an uh, important appointment in 12 minutes. Not in 12 minutes. Um, in, in 35, 40 minutes. So we're going to go through a couple more things. Please smash the like in case I'm late. Then I can tell my wife at least it wasn't in vain. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm going to be putting a lot more actual video lessons out. Some shorter ones as well. Um, you know, but my stuff's, as you see, it's not the most edited in the world. I just try to get the raw info out there, you know. We'll get some better editing for those people with the smaller um, attention spans and stuff like that, but. Okay. When I have a chart like that, do I have several entries and exits or just one entry and scale out? One to two entries, generally speaking, and scale out. I'm all about kind of keeping it simple. All right. Get good risk reward, scale out. Price target one. Okay. In this case for me, um, Right, VWAP, high a day. And something like RDHL. VWAP, high a day, pre-market highs. Size out. Keep it simple, okay? Sell to all the billies. Some billies are here, here. Sell to them. Sell with the short sellers. All these short sellers, I actually want to sell with them. I'm actually on their team, technically. Now, I'm not on their team, but I want to be in the flow with them, okay? So BDRX, for example. And then guess what? I get to be there when they're being squeezed too, if I've been patient enough. There are some times where I'm not selling it into price target one at all. In fact, my price target one isn't pre until pre-market highs. There are markets where price target one for me is pre-market highs, guys. This is what you have to understand. It's the beauty of this setup. It's the beauty of looking at trades. It's the beauty of trading reversals. It's just a matter of how patient can I be? Does this make sense? How patient can I be? Yes, Alpha, this week, y'all. The rest of Trading Alpha is coming out this week. I had to tweak a lot of stuff, so I'm really excited. The pack's grown like crazy. Um, we've had a lot of new members lately. It's really, really exciting times. A lot of people getting their 
getting their act together, just immediately the bleeding stops for a lot of these people, a lot of the traders. That's the number one. Stop bleeding, stop bleeding, stop fucking bleeding. Stop being Billy. You're going to bleed. You're going to fucking bleed to death, no matter what, if you're Billy, okay? No matter what. No matter what, you're fucked here. These guys, these guys here, right? They're fucked too. <laughs> Here's the problem. These guys are fucked too. The VWAP buyers, these guys are fucked too. They're less fucked than this Billy, right? Because they're like more savvy. They're dip behind VWAP and they're going to risk right here. And here's their risk reward. And here's my risk reward right here, right? Right? Look. There's my risk reward right there, right? Look, still a great trade? Nah. Man. Nah. Look. Low a day's there, dog. Sorry. Low a day's there. You're one to one, max. You're less than one to one to high a day the way I see it, okay? I hope that makes sense. I really, really hope it makes sense, you, you guys. I mean, you wanna risk here, you're gonna get stopped out over and over and over and over and over again, okay? That's why I don't buy it up there in the first place, personally. Yeah, I get one to six to high, I don't care, personally. 99% of the time, if I really wanna be in the stock, can I trade it? Yes, I can. Can I trade it here, get good risk reward and work it? Yes, I can. I'm not saying my way is the only way ever. I never say that ever. There are tons of ways to play these things. This is how I do it. This is what I believe the best way for you, especially if you're struggling. I know for a fact, if you're Billy, I know for a fact it's easier if you do what I do, or at least try to make your way down. I promise it's the only way. I've been doing this a really long time, you guys. Okay? I got about seven, seven more minutes or so. But yeah, I, my, the, the reason I have success, the reason my students have success right now, especially where a lot of people have been struggling, they don't understand this dynamic. Not only they, do they not understand the dynamics that are going on, they don't understand the macros that are going on, the algos, the institutional investors, the dilution, the dumping. But then they just, most pe most of the programs out here, guys, and you're going to be sold to a lot today, most likely. You're going to pay a lot of money and they're going to say, watch this video once a day or once a week. There's some video lesson and expect you to learn, you know? Maybe they live trade once a week. Maybe you get one live trading webinar a week. Do you know how easy it is? I bet you any one of you just watching this, not any one of you, but a lot of you could probably give a webinar once a week and sound like a fucking genius. Or not trade or not do anything and like just talk. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you could probably do that easily. Maybe get lucky in a trade here and there. Right? Every fucking day, live for everybody. Super transparent wins, losses in real time. There's no hiding, right? So I do that. I do pre-market prep for what, uh, 30 minutes. And then we live trade an hour, two hours, three hours sometimes if it's, if it's hot. <clears throat> then I do one-on-one -on -one with my lifetime members. I do one-on-one -on -one from, uh, for two to, we're going to be opening up another hour here a day, pretty much, uh, going forward. Cause we've got new members, but, uh, it's going to be two to three hours a day. I work with students one-on-one, -on -one, literally going through their trades and their charts and their data with them to help them. Then on Fridays, I do trader therapy. Sorry, every single day. After that, I do power hour prep live like this with my students. And then if it's hot and I'm trading, I'll trade. I'll do a power hour prep webinar. So I've been pretty much uploading one to two live webinars a day recently especially that's what I'm going to be doing going forward. It's just one to two a day and they're all going up on the site. So those who have jobs, those who can't be there for the lives and see the live webinars and watch the live executions and everything and the live everything get to watch it. We do trader therapy on Fridays where we get together as a group. It's a crazy, it's crazy, man. All I do is teach. Listen to my voice. It's always gone because all I do is teach and talk all day now and trade. 
It's all I do. It's my calling right now is to help fucking people stop being billies, stop buying highs a day, stop stop joining other services where you're just going to waste your money and time. You know, this is a game where it's like so hard that people use the difficulty of it for you to just keep paying and not get better and not make money because that's how you, if you're getting better, you're making money, right? At the end of the day. And this is a game where it's so easy to say, hey, it's this hard. You just haven't worked hard enough or you're this and this and this, right? I believe in that less and less. I believe more and more in that most people are just learning, working really hard because I talk to you guys one on one over and over and over again. It's humanized it so much. I just work with you guys. It's like, holy shit. This person's worked really hard for the last four years. They haven't not worked, but they've just been trying to learn things that don't work. Trying to put a square peg into a round hole. Right? Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope it makes sense, y'all, but... So I believe less and less in, um, and that it's just, you know, your fault and more and more in the fault of actually the actual gurus, you know, who are out here just slanging breakouts and shit. <laughs> so dumb. I got to go in three minutes. I got to go. Sorry, five minutes. So let's get to this really fast. If you guys have enjoyed this, this special webinar today, please smash the like for me. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to get a lot more info to you. Uh, take advantage. It's uh, the cheapest the pack is ever going to get today. Um, the one-on-one -on -one stuff, you just got to get in touch with Tanner. Uh, in the Discord and stuff like that, we're going to have to be capping that soon too and raising the price on that because I'm booked. You know, I didn't realize that was going to be so popular. and But... I kind of did too, because there's nowhere you can get that access to someone with a track record who's actual verifiably good at trading. Okay. Because it takes a lot of time. It's, and it's, it's tough, but it's also incredibly, incredibly beneficial, not just for me, but for the students. So, and then if nothing else, get in the pack, you guys get in the pack. Um, it's a special, special environment. I can't explain it. Well, I can. Everyone's there for each other. You saw. You saw today, even when things go wrong, like everyone's amazing, man. I've had, my dad got sick. Uh, you know, he's dying at the moment. And, and a lot of bad things have happened to me over the years. And this pack has been um, the one constant that's been there. It's an amazing group. It's a different culture. It's an eight-year-old chat with... Uh, Seven-year-old chat, right? Just an um, amazing group of people. I love you guys. That's all. Okay, really fast. Let's just peep our few tickers for today, right? Which were what? Um, RDHL. High risk, okay. High risk. Offering ability is low, though, but a lot of overhead supply and stuff, all right? I'm going to do a full lesson on dilution tracker soon, so because I just don't have too much time right now. Here's their outstanding shares. You can see that they've got an ATM and 8.6 million in warrants. So 47 cents they can dump. 47 cents, right? Remaining warrants, outstanding 8.6 million. RDHL, 47 cents. 8.6 million shares to dump, Okay. 47 cents. So when this stock got over 47 cents, please tell me you guys understand this. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Okay. Because I, I don't have time to do another one. Okay. Hey, look, and it's HC Wainwright, even better. That's who I said. Uh, that's who I said was in the suit, didn't I? Someone tell me, smash a like. Someone just smash a like for me. Come on now. I said literally the person in the suit, and this person who is in the suit is HC Wainwright, is. Specifically, H.C. Wainwright, the price that they have, 47 cents, 8.6 million shares, okay? 8.6 million shares, 47 cents, right? 
8.6 million shares, 47 cents. Oops. Forty-seven. Okay, so that's freaking awesome. Um, all right. So when the stock crossed this line, okay, you guys, <laughs> he's even there. Look, that's amazing. When the stock crossed this line, okay, this guy is able to now dump eight million shares. Please let me know if that makes sense, you guys. Please. Boom. Second it crosses that line, he can execute and dump those shares, right? But what do you need to get rid of 8 million shares? What do you need to get rid of 8 million shares? Liquidity, right? Liquidity. Liquidity. Look, liquidity, guys. Volume. Volume. So what are they doing? They're dumping, right? Look, look, they control it. Volume, dumping. Let's fucking go. Smash the like. I got to go. I love you guys all. Uh, make sure to hit the like, subscribe. I mean, come on now. Come on. I can't keep doing this over and over again for free. <laughs> it just is what it is. I see it over and over and over and over. Okay? Okay? They tell you where they're dumping and they dump. Period. End of story. 47 cents was the line. They got over it. Good to go, right? Oh, and it's a breakout today, right? Perfect. Perfect breakout and dumping. Their float will be bigger tomorrow. That's it. Love you all. Stay safe. Uh, QR code top left corner. We'll take you straight to the Cyber Monday page. If not, rwtrades.com. Uh, hit the Cyber Monday sale. We'll see you guys in chat. And I will catch you guys soon. Peace out. Mm -hmm. Can you take me higher? Na -na -na -na.